right. Hey, thanks for coming back again today. I know I said it every day, but it's good. Okay, so today, before I actually show you what we're going to be doing in class, we have an activity. It's, uh, it's charades. I don't know if you've ever done this before, especially not today. It's a big box of doom with extra O's for more oom. Okay. So how, how many, show of hands, who's played charades before? Okay, so you all know how. I don't have to go through that part. The only difference with today is that instead of getting in pairs or groups and then kind of competing that way, we'll just have volunteers come up and we'll do them one at a time. Maybe we'll, we'll kind of run against the clock. How about that? So we'll see how many we can get them all done in eight minutes or whatever comes first. We'll try something like that. So before I even ask for a volunteer, I'll tell you right now that they have to do with, I guess the category is going to be children's literature, like popular children's books. Okay. So, who wants to be my first volunteer? Oh, Brett. Okay, good. All right. I'm excited. These are pretty, pretty good. Oh, one other questions. thing, I guess. Yes, Holly? Um, is it like young children, like picture books, or is it like... First grade, kindergarten, oh. maybe second grade. That that That's a good question. Um, one other thing <laughs> is, if you do find it being really difficult, you can pass, but I want you to give it a good shot first, okay? Is there an emblem for passing? You just tell me. Okay, class. Normally, right, it's it's nonverbal. It uh, we don't talk, but uh, that would be the one exception, Brett. That's good. So you can tell me this one's too hard. You can give it to me. I'll set it off to the side. You can grab a new one. Maybe we'll come back to it. Don't say what it is. Okay. Okay. Box of the two. Pinocchio. <laughs> Good. That was pretty easy, right? That wasn't too bad. Maybe that was too easy. Okay, who else wants to go? We got like six more minutes. That's me. All right. Remember, you have to give it a, a, a good shot before you uh, before you say I'm gonna pass. Before I start to giggle too much. You can giggle if you want. But that's gonna be really hard for them. Um. So. Three Little Pigs. She knew what I was doing. Good job. <laughs> Thank you, I just didn't get to show my mood. Do you want to go next? No, I'm sure. Okay, who else? I've got like seven more of these, and there's only... Oh, no. <laughs> Holly, thank you. Go, oh, Holly. I'm really bad at this, so bear with me. Do you just see what I did for Three Little Pigs? I don't know. last things are brilliant. They're going to get anything. <laughs> so you have to think about it. It's a thinker. How do I do this? Just go. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, cut down your hair. <laughs> Furs? Is it? I'm an innocent bystander. Yeah, that's him. Well, not so innocent. Hey, that's oh, But the hint was a children's book. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay, how about, okay, hint, it doesn't have to be a classic story, like you're doing Three Little Pigs and Pinocchio happened to be. How about that? Okay. Like, um, I don't know how else to do this. Or here's a boot. Is there any other chance of meatballs? Bam. Are you serious? Oh, 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 it's pretty amazing that you got that from, yeah. 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 from yeah. this. Yeah, I don't know what's up. Like, good. I don't know who's going to. All right. I'm more. Oh, All right. 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 I guess I really haven't played this today. I'm so excited. Okay. Um. Just be meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um. Um. Really, I'm the only one here. 
survive? No. <laughs> that's pretty hard. Right. You did at one. Good night, Lord. What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you love that one. Remember, in the one of my stipulations, you had to have given a good shot. Too. Oh, you had to have given a good shot. Oh, yeah. You had to have given a good shot. What? Did you say bang bang? No. Harry Potter? I feel uncomfortable. Yes. Oh, was it? What was it? Um. Um. It's actually more for like. Body training. Body training. Yeah. I know what it is. I can't. Everybody poops. Bam. I can give that to you. It's body Breaker, like everything I do in your class, as you've learned already, there's a reason for that, right? There's a reason that we I did children's literature as examples for this. You know that you're in oral traditions, and we're going to be doing oral interpretation. But you probably didn't know yet, we've already been starting prosody, right? Tone and <coughs> volume and pitch and things like that, right? And we're going to add to it now as nonverbals, and here's the reason why. Next week, your final for this unit. The uh, Miss Peabody's class from the first grade at Washington uh, Elementary School is going to bring her first graders in here to the media center. You're going to be divided up into pairs. I think I'm going to use your three o'clock buddies for that. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And one of you is going to be reading a children's book, probably one similar to these or even one of these, right? And the other one is going to be doing pantomime, miming, doing something to draw the kids in even more, right? To get them involved. And then tomorrow we're actually going to expand onto this by having ways you can get audience participation. So you can get your five or six kids that are in your group listening to your book and watching you act out things, get them even more involved, okay? So first though, we're going to go over nonverbals for that. We're going to go over pretty briefly. Okay. My unmute projector, that should have popped back up, right? Yeah. Yes. That is unmuted. What are you, what's your setting on? Yes. Now it's meant. Yes, it's again. Now it's not. Yeah. That's weird. Okay. Like my intro, that was, that was interesting. Okay, so communication without words, right? And the whole idea is that you can use these different techniques. And obviously, these are things you use every day. The things that they were using up here, a lot of these cues, a lot of these like facial expressions we're bringing into, these are things you do all the time without even thinking about it. But the whole purpose of this is that you are thinking about it, that you're going to incorporate it intentionally into your unit uh, final. Okay, so let's go over briefly. Facial expressions, right? So we have ways of looking sad, happy, scared, angry. Those are usually involuntary, but we can make them voluntary. One interesting thing, though, about them is that universally most of these have certain facial characteristics. And so your students are going to know those, what they are. If you use anger, you know, if you think of an angry face, chances are that first grader is going to know what that means. Okay. I thought this would be kind of fun. This is with Kelly and Hobbs. I was thinking maybe we could get volunteers to uh, assign names to these facial expressions. I'm going to do the first one, though. This one I'm going to call number two, or going number two. 
You're not good. <laughs> okay. Anybody got one for this one? Raise your hand. Intimidation. Lindsay? Oh, I'm sorry. What's that one? <laughs> Intimidation. Okay, that, that'll work. He's kind of arr. How about this one, David? Holly? He's tired. Tired? Okay, yeah, yeah. He looks tired. His eyes are droopy, right? How about that one? Bethany? Haunted house. Okay. He's terrified. Terrified, that's bad, okay. <laughs> terrified, okay. Can we do anything else with these? We could probably add other ones, right? This could probably be bored. This one could probably be overwhelmed, right? This would work. Oh my god, Mr. Paul's just had too much homework. <laughs> like that, okay. Okay, this one, I don't know, I can't wait to skip that. How about that one? Sick. Yeah, maybe sick. Right, so you know what these all mean. I'm not giving you anything you don't already know today, but just showing you how to really think about it intentionally. Eye gaze, that's another nonverbal, right? We use these. Looking, blinking, staring, important nonverbals, right? They indicate different things hostility, interest, attraction. You all get what that means. Okay, so I, I thought it'd be fun. I have a few video clips, you know, I like to do that. So here's one from uh, 30 Rock. Who here likes 30 Rock? <laughs> I all know, maybe I'm just old. Okay. <laughs> I ever went to, I was a flower girl for my Aunt Linda. When they said, you may now kiss the bride, I did my first ever eye roll. <laughs> and today, I honor that little girl's eye roll with this, this masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much Liz Lemon cares about having a special day. Great. Right? So also that's showing in the in pantomime, right? The difference between pantomime and mime is that mime is usually uh, more fine motor skill possibly. Like your pantomime is more uh, out there, right? You're trying to be more spontaneous, more uh, exaggerated in your actions, and you can do that. And you can find a good balance between both. You don't have to be doing this the whole time in front of first graders, right? <laughs> you want to make things make sense with what you're reading and what what your partner is reading too. And then this is another one I added from Tangled, right? So that's a good uh, eye. <laughs> <laughs> so then let's see what else we got to do. Okay, so touch, right? The term is haptics for any of you who are taking notes. You don't have to take notes though, like usual. I'm just going to, I can email this to you or it's on Google Slides so you can look at these up. You can look these up later if you need references for when you're working on it. Okay, communication through touch. Use way to communicate affection, status, power, right? And then I, I do want to put one disclaimer in here. Obviously, you probably know this already, but gender differences and touch, right? And also with grades and things. So appropriateness is something you're really going to have to think about if you want to incorporate touch as a nonverbal during this um, presentation you're essentially doing for first graders, right? There are some things that are appropriate. Like if you're reading, let's say, a version of The Wizard of Oz, right? You find a 15-page version of that for kids. The Wicked Witch, you know, she's kind of creepy. Maybe her going, you know, I'll get you my pretty, and going up and actually doing something like that on her shoulder, that might be appropriate. It would make sense to do that. It's going to add to that experience with kids, right? Here's just one other one that I really like for a version of touch. Fist bump. Fist bump is not a fun fighting database. No, this, this isn't a fighting thing. It's what people do sometimes yeah, when yeah. they're it's excited and the pumped up. The, the delay. Kind of going over the top, doing something funny. That can help too, right? What else we got here? Body language and posture. Posture can indicate a person's perceived power, their status, right? Okay. Can anybody give me an example of how posture can be used for power? Mm -hmm. Like what kind what kind of posture represents power? Brittany? Or I'm Bethany. Sorry. <laughs> Well, maybe you can do the surveillance drone, though. Like, power. Yeah, that would work. Superman's powerful. That makes sense. How about, like, um, a boss? If you come in to the office, what does the boss look like? Huh? Well, you can just standing up straight, maybe chest puffed out. Straight in your yeah, side. Straight in your side. Yeah. That kind of posture. Okay. 
How about this? Are these? Is this one from uh, Arrested Development? Is this showing power? Or what? After we tell me what this is. Oh. <laughs> something you could use too, right? I mean, it still ends up being comical. We all laugh at that. Here's another example. Now, with pantomime, right, going overboard, sometimes it's also useful to uh, change up the perception of the, of the person that, how do I want to say that? Going against the grain, right? <coughs> so normally you know what the chicken dance looks like, right? Or if I said act like a chicken, you'd have probably almost all of you universally would have the same idea. Right? If I go and I change that drastically, it's going to possibly have a different effect on the audience, right? That could be positive or negative, and you'll have to figure that out with your, with your teammate. Here's one version of, of uh, chicken dance gone horribly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then that worked too, didn't it? It kind of uh, made fun of your perception of, of what you normally would think of, right? Because normally, I'm not going to do it. Does anybody want to show me what a chicken dance five looks like? Or what a chicken, if I said act like a chicken? Any of you? We've been working on coming up here. That was part of what that whole. Uh, charades thing was, right? Getting comfortable being in front of everybody, coming out in the middle, having an audience in front of you. All right, all right. I was wondering how long I was going to have to do that. Oh, that's good. He's been, he's been to some weddings. Okay, now paralanguage. This is actually what we've already been doing the last few days with, with prosody, with going over tone and volume, right? And then gasping, hip, hiccuping, laughing, sighing, snorting. If there, and then this is where it gets a little sketchy. Is some uh, theorists, I guess you'd call, them, would say that if it's involuntary like these are, that it's not actually communication, right? But there's also people that would go against that too. I'm not going to go into that. That's something you can wait till college to go into if you want to. But considering a different way of simply changing your tone of voice, right, it might change it. I think we, we could do this as an exercise. We take the sentence, no, really, I'm fine, and we put different emotions to it. It, come, it comes across differently. And I was going to have some people do some examples of that. Does anybody want to say this, but say it as if you're actually mad? Can anybody show me what that looks like? Brittany, Bethany, a lot of B's. <laughs> well, you're getting A's. So. <laughs> oh, you said angry? Yeah, say this as if you're actually, you're, you're not fine, you're angry. No, really, I'm fine. Okay, right, we've all said it like that. Okay, it feels very good. That's good. Yeah. Okay, all right, can someone do it as if they're scared instead? Brittany. It's Bethany. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's do it. Scared. Scared. Um, no, really, I'm fine. You got a pause you put in there, you know? That would almost be like a gasp maybe you throw in. That's usually an indicator of, of fear. Okay, one more. Let's see, we've got anger and fear. Let's do, how about, do we have another idea? That they really actually are fine? <laughs> well, they're right. Okay, sure. Or like happy? Yeah. Okay, how about that? How about sad? Oh, sad. That's a, can we go sad? Yeah. How am I supposed to be sad? You're really sad. Okay, well, you, well, you get you caught up here. Your puppy just, no, that's too sad. Oh. Your brother had the measles, but it's your favorite brother. <laughs> okay, and we want to say that? As if you're sad? 
Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, I'm fine. Okay, that's good. And then for those of you who saw Caitlin too, she did some other nonverbals too. She looked down. That's usually that's a form of sadness, right? So these are things you're incorporating into that. Okay, proximes. And that's another type of nonverbal, and basically it's the proximity, right? So how far or close you are to something will change the communication that's going on between that, and there'll actually be communication between that. So one way of looking at that for your assignment that's coming up to think about is you're going to have an audience in front of you, right? Depending on, as the person moving around, because the reader's probably not moving, but you could incorporate that, this might be something we'll bring up tomorrow. Um, the closer you are or the farther you are away from these kids who are likely sitting you know, on the carpet, and depending on what character you're trying to portray or, or pretend to be or what actions you're doing is going to change that, right? If I'm over here and they're here and I'm doing this and I'm pretending to be the big bad wolf, it's going to be a lot different than if I'm standing behind my partner over here doing it, right? Okay. So distance has something to do with that. And now these ones, I kind of just grouped them all together on one slide. The reason for that is because a lot of these especially artifacts and time aren't really going to be relevant because of our circumstances as we have a set time frame. You know, we have, you're not going to be able to bring in too many things. So let's go over what they are quickly though. So appearance, right? Colors, your clothing, your hairstyle, even our ages, our age difference between them, right? There's more probably a respect barrier between that. You can maybe take advantage of that or you could kind of, uh, break their perception again, right? If you act out of character what they would perceive you as, it might that would change that whole that whole dynamic. Artifacts, objects, and pictures, even a picture like this, right? So anybody have an idea of like objects, some examples that that communicate something. Stephanie? Maybe a book. A book? So the, the other person can be reading the book. So I yeah. that could be an object we could use. Yeah, okay, um, yeah, as far as things you can use, I'm just going to expand that to just objects in general that communicate to people. How about that? Do you have any examples of that? How about, does a, a watch communicate something? Depending on how much it's worth, maybe? Like a wedding ring would like send a message like, oh, I'm very single. It does, ring. right? My wedding ring, which I only take off when I go to the club. <laughs> that doesn't, I'm just kidding. Don't tell my wife that. Don't tell my wife that. Don't tell my wife that. Okay. Right, my wedding ring, though, it does represent something, right? There's a reason that I wear it every day and I feel naked without it, right? Because it means something, because that was a special day. So it means something to me. All right, so how about this? This is a picture. Are there any art artifacts in this picture of Giant Bravo? Right? Glasses. Glasses, yeah. What's he probably trying to convey there? Coolness. Yeah, right? He has an emotion, an attitude. Is there anything else? The chocolates. The chocolates, right? They're a symbol, Valentine's Day kind of thing, the heart. Okay. And it's also got other things going on too. I mean, there's every nonverbals in here. There's posture, there's proximity, how close they are. Right? Okay, time. This is the last one. That I'm going to go over. And this one is a, sometimes a little bit harder to understand, but let's put it in this perspective. You've all been to school dances before, right? You're going to one, probably there's one coming up. So there's a difference between if you're the person who arrives a half hour early, they're still setting up, you go and sit on the bench, maybe take your foot around a little bit all by yourself. Right? There's a difference between that and the person who shows up exactly on time. A lot of people do, right? right? When the door's open, we've got the big rush of people. And then we've got Someone comes in maybe a half hour late, struts in, breaks the doors open, does some of this. So, yeah. right with their entourage behind them. <laughs> right? There's a difference there in, in their communication and what they're communicating to people that are already in that room. Okay? That's why this one's really not going to play too big a part in it because you're not allowed to be late. Okay? All right, and that's actually my presentation as far as this goes. Now, like I said, tomorrow, we're going to be going into this a little bit more with how you can get your audience involved in it. After that, we're also going to be going down to the computer lab, and you'll be the media specialist there. I've already talked to her, and they have 
books brought in because you know for ninth grade we don't actually have first grade books so at least a large catch of them so she has a lot of information for you so I suggest you take advantage of that you're going to be picking your own book with your teammate and then choosing certain things in it you know if it's the Wizard of Oz for instance you can maybe think of how you would act out or how you make it like the the witch that scene where the house falls maybe you'd want to do more you'd want to pull somebody in from the audience right so we'll be renting those books, and then next week we're going to be going over this, right? So that's what we're doing tomorrow. Any other questions? Any questions? I don't have any Okay, that's it. And look, the bell is ringing right now. Ding, ring, ring, ring. Ding. <laughs>